In a world filled with wild human emotion and crazy psychological swings, there is but one man who rises above the rest who is willing to share his psychosis so that it may be analyzed for the betterment of mankind. Life, I'm never so packed for the stack, never lied on the back, got a bag from the way that I write it. Queen looking Tyson, do that I survived, do an 80 to the house, then I hit it to the sky, change haters on a tyrant, talking to the grip and the face be still like that. What's up? Welcome back. You know the feeling you get when you're driving on the freeway and you come up to this big pile of cars everyone is stopped and you spend like 20 minutes on the freeway just to find out that everybody had to pause and look at this guy on the side of the road who was changing a tire it's human psychology we can't look away from a car accident was it a car accident is something wrong i have to look that's what this episode's gonna be like you're gonna be watching a car accident but you won't be able to look away <laughs> So as we're going, I'm going to give you both the hands, but I'm also going to give you the psychology behind it. Where's my mind at? Where's my brain at? During this session, we're going to start out early in the day on my way to the casino. 2024 has not been off to a good start, and here's why. I kind of started my year off by punting off all these chips, and if you know this channel at all, I take my poker winnings, I invest in the stock market. Some of the trades are going really well but it's not because of anything I'm doing at the poker table. I took this week off of work to just to play poker. So I'm already getting paid, the bills are covered, and the goal is just to try to put some money in the investment account. The year may not have started well, but I have decided that I'm gonna study PLO and figure this game out, and I'm starting to feel a little bit better as I've been studying. This is the third real session that I've had at PLO. The night starts off with a bomb pot. I get dealt some decent weapons, a pair of kings with the suit to the ace. Unfortunately, the deck comes out icy cold to start. We get a flop drier than a saltine cracker. Can't do anything with it since everyone else is holding four cards. There's no way we're still the best hand here. There's a bet, and I'm going to let this one go. The first hour continues this way. In between bomb pots and opening hands that are strong pre-flop but aren't any good by the river, I lose about $400. We may not have started well in the first bomb pot, but we have a pair of nines and great connection in a suit with this one. I pot it, and I get three callers. The flop is paired, but we do have a weak flush draw to go with our pair of nines. I don't think that this should have been a bet, but I did continue for $35. One player makes the call. The turn now gives me a pair of tens, a flush draw, an open-ended straight draw with the full house possibilities, and now I checked. Feels like those should have been reversed. I probably should have checked the flop and bet now, but I, I'm still learning this game. I checked because I didn't want to get blown off my equity in this spot. My opponent checks behind. It's possible that we really don't want clubs to come in right now, the river brings a jack. This looks fantastic. We essentially have the nuts. I don't think he's going to have pocket jacks very often, and that's really all we're worried about since anything else would have bet up to this point. I now bet once again with the straight. My opponent snap folds. A small pot is coming my way. Yeah, baby. Things are looking up. Starting to feel a little better again. Yes, we did start off on a little bit of a losing streak, a little bit card dead, not really hitting flops, but now we're making some money back. Okay, we're feeling all right. The next hand that matters, I'm able to check my big blind with some marginal cards, but they're fairly connected. I do flop a baby flush. The flop checks through, the turn brings in an over card. Since it checked through on the flop, we now have some two pair and set combos, plus the king that people might be willing to call a bet with after it checks, go for a small bet of $35. There are no takers though, and another small pot comes this way. Hey, we're winning small pots, but at least we're winning something. We are stuck on the night, but Nothing's gone too terribly wrong at this point. I go card dead for a little while before I end up picking up this hand at a new table, which is ace, ace, eight, seven with the suit. So I have some decent connection. I've got aces, I've got a suit. This is a good hand, I pot it, I get three callers. The flop, all right, come on deck. Show me that third ace. We're ready for it. Nope. Couldn't see many flops worse for my hand than this one. It's an all diamond flop. There's straights out there sets out there there's just no way we're good doesn't matter that we're holding an ace of diamonds there's no way we're surviving to the river with the best hand on this one gonna have to let it go when there's a bet it's starting to get late and i've won two hands so far over several hours it's kind of starting to bug me when we get to this hand six six seven seven with a suit under the gun i go ahead and raise this one up there's a three bet to my left and i'm gonna go ahead and make the call after the small blind comes in cold the flop, hey -oh! bottom set is looking pretty good, but I think I'm supposed to be checking quite a bit in this spot, so when the small blind checks, I check as well to the pre-flop razor. 
the flop ends up checking through. The turn is clean and the small blind leads for 125. No way I can just sit here and call this one. I need to raise this up. I go ahead and make it $300 more. I would like to get the call here, but if we take down the pot, that's fine. We're still making a nice little return on our set and that's what ends up happening. This is kind of the pivotal turning point moment in the night. Things haven't been good, but they haven't been that bad up to this point. Now, I've been patient, I've been waiting, I've been trying to play just good hands, and I continue to be patient, but it's starting to wear on me. Because what happens is I go, not only do I go fairly card dead for a while, but anytime I do have cards, I miss. Now this has happened already in the night, but you'll see it happening here over and over and over and over. <laughs> and it gets really frustrating to just miss and miss and miss and miss and always have like a second best hand or a marginal hand. And yes, you can tap the table and say, good hand, but only for a while before it starts to get to you. Good river. I don't need my nice hand. Nice. Listen to this sigh. That is the sound of a frustrated middle-aged man who is starting to lose it. All right, just a little bit of shameless self-promotion. 90% of you watching this are not subscribed to the channel, like and sub, so you don't miss the next part of this series that's going to be coming out. I'm gonna continue. This is a week of poker. I've got more videos from this week coming. Don't miss them, like and sub. Back to it, let's go. Now we get to this hand, and this hand is probably the point where it really unravels for me. Two pairs, aces and deuces with the suit. I raise it up, I get some collars, we go to the flop, and I make top Set, yes, this is my chance to get paid. Why are you all folding? You've been calling everything all night long and getting there, and now you're gonna fold? Ah! It's at this point, mentally, that I'm starting to say, come on, I'm due. Give me that big hand, let me get paid, let me pull some chips in. I've been watching people drag $2,000 pots off the table, I've been watching a pair of fives win at showdown after two players go all in. I've been here for almost six hours now and I've won four hands. That's just over one hand every two hours. Now a new player joins the game. He buys in for about 500 bucks. This guy didn't do anything to me personally. I just had a hard time watching him turn his 500 into a much, much larger stack by winning hand after hand after hand. Well, I couldn't get anything. Really convincing myself with all these lies that I am due these chips, which is never the case in poker. You never deserve to win a pot. That's not the way this goes. It's, but mentally, I'm there. It's my turn. I've been losing all night. I've been missing all these flops. I've been folding. It's my turn. I have aces. I don't want to get blown off of them. I decide I'm going to check it. Our opponent who's been stacking up the chips goes ahead and leads out with a bet. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not folding. I'm not ready to give up on this hand. I have a decent hand, plus I have a two on the board, so I have a pair. Plus I have the set potential from the aces, so I'm calling this bet. Our other opponent thinks about it for a while and ends up making the call as well, and we're headed to a turn. Now on the turn, we make trip deuces. I check it over, and it gets checked to the button who puts in the state maximum $300 on any betting street. I feel like I'm probably skunked here. What's he doing this with? He could have a two, he could have a set of jacks, he could have jacks and sixes, he could have an over pair like kings and have two pair. I'm gonna go ahead and make the call. Now the opponent in the cutoff raises it to $600. He can only raise 300 more. There's no way he's doing this light. In this game, when you have value, you gotta go for it. But only being able to raise 300 when the pot is already this big, you can't bluff. So it's how good of a value hand does he have? So I would need him to be doing this with a worse value hand, which I just don't think is happening here. I think this is probably six is full, jack's full, etc. Maybe it's a deuce, maybe it's jack deuce, six deuce, something like that. But those are far less likely to be in his range when he makes the call preflop. So I'm not expecting a lot of six deuce or jack deuce. I think this is most likely sixes or jacks. Now it goes to the button who had raised originally. He now puts in another $300 raise. Guys, there is no way that I'm good here. And I knew it. I knew this mentally that there was no way I was good. But when it gets back to me, I said, I have aces, I've been stuck, I am due, I have a deuce, I'm gonna put the money in. Why? Because I was tilted. It had nothing to do with making a good choice. I made a terrible decision and really it came down to ego. I'll let this play out real quick. Yep, that's a nine. That's not doing anything. 
Jack's full. Six is full. I was exactly where I thought I was, but I couldn't get away from this hand because of... I'm embarrassed to tell you guys this, but I think this is what's happening on a subconscious level. My ego is telling me, you're a winning player, Sean. You should be able to pull these chips in. You shouldn't be giving away chips in every single hand. You shouldn't be losing constantly. You should be up. You've been studying. You've been disciplined. I'm telling myself all these things, and I'm allowing them to spin me into this spiral of madness rather than just go, yep, it's variance. Yep, sometimes they're going to have a boat here. Yep, I need to fold. I could have easily saved myself $600 here by folding. I knew I was no good, but I called anyway just being like, another two or an ace is going to come. It's three outs, guys. Three outs. I put $600 on three outs. Ugh. I think it's important to recognize tilt. And when you can see me lose my mind and go crazy with these illogical arguments that I'm telling myself, you can identify it easier in your own mind when it starts to creep up. You'll hear it. I know you've done it before. If you've had a bad session, you've done something like this where you've put the chips in absolutely dead, drawing super, super thin <laughs> because you've decided it's time to gamble. So I leave that session with basically nothing down, almost $2,400. I took this whole week off to play poker. I'm planning to get four sessions in. This is session number one, and I want to show you the impact. So this is going to be a continued series. We're not just going to end it with this video. Let me give you a glimpse into the next day's session. Thanks for being here. Hope you enjoyed this. If you've never checked out this channel before, here's another session you can watch. Glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. Like and sub if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.